Welcome to Let's Get Metaphysical, the show that stretches you beyond your five senses. When you are looking for your next step on the path into the unseen, we've got you covered. Join epic adventure seekers and level up your game with your host, reality magician, Allie Bierman. Welcome, epic adventure seekers. I'm Allie Bierman, your guide to demystifying your world. You're listening to Let's Get Metaphysical, connecting heart and mind. If you've not yet done so, please leave a review. It's really easy to do over on our show website, and it really helps others to find us and to make sense of their worlds. You know, find people just like you. Today's guest, Paula Ensign, will surprise you with tales and experiences. Before jumping in, I want to share my popular checklist, Seven Critical Keys to Successful Relationships. Everything in your life, everything physical, emotional, spiritual, every challenge in your world reflects or reveals relationship disconnects. So get a start on sorting out your life with this checklist and you'll find the link to grab your copy in the show notes. Paula Ensign started her professional journey teaching stringed instruments, the kind you play with a bow, to elementary school kids. Next, she became a recognized leader in the burgeoning organizing industry. Not content simply to do and share, her creativity launched her into a new career. I mean, a totally new original track, creating tips booklets and other non-traditional products that went international while rocketing her career as an organizer, being recognized as a speaker in that new industry. Not one to sit back and watch life go by. Paulette spent 40 years, that's four zero years, investigating the esoteric teachings of metaphysics. As her metaphysical awareness expanded across her life, she discovered more joy, calm, and groundedness filling her world. Prepare to smile lots, discovering all kinds of fun facts, and I highly recommend putting away any multitasking that you're doing, because you don't want to miss anything. And for those of you who aren't watching the video, go over to the show site and take a look, because Paula has a dynamite smile. So welcome, Paula, to Let's Get Metaphysical, and we certainly will. Allie, thank you so much for inviting me. I'm looking forward to sharing today. I'm just excited. I I love being in your energy. I love when people share about following their heart, even when it takes them to uncharted territory. And that's really an understatement in your case, since the organizing industry was really just sprouting. Yes, it was. It wasn't more than about five years old when I started my involvement with that industry. It's very cool because I know a friend who's a professional organizer. I have another friend who I think I've known her 20 years and she spent all this time telling me she's organizing her stuff and sometimes she's paying someone to do it. So I don't know where you ever are people, either they are organized or they aren't, or there are sometimes people in between. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Like, like any other field, you're going to find a very wide range of people and their approaches to things. It's fascinating that early on, there were already 26 different um, different categories of organizing in the first five years. And I've been away from it now for quite a while, although I do have some very lifelong friends, close friends, uh, friendships that were made and started during those years of my involvement with the industry. It's really fascinating. I never thought about there being different areas. I know like, I organize my home. I know it's in every drawer. I organize my papers. I never thought people organize their businesses, people organize their personal. What are some categories that might not be so obvious? 
Well, they're subcategories because children definitely from early on, their rooms can stand to be organized. And as they go through the educational process, uh, their time management for homework and play and eating and sleeping and things like that. And then there are various industries. There are people who have come from other industries like the legal field who have then turned their knowledge and experience around to specialize in organizing law firms or in medical offices or in corporate environments. I mean, and then when the computer came on, that was a whole new territory to to go through. Uh, Organizing your computer files as crucial as organizing your paper files. Oh, oh yeah, boy, I learned that one the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> I think many of us did. <laughs> I remember back when computers were a new thing in your house, and I'd type up a document, and I'd just close it, and I didn't know you had to know where you were putting it. it was... <laughs> right. Well, that applies. That applies just about in anything that we do. Makes sense. I also love your referral to kids. I have a son and a daughter, my son being the older one. He's the most organized person on the planet. (laughs) One day I came home, I'd been out, and he had been organizing my stuff, which really pissed me off because I didn't want it touched. And his sister... I used to tell her that, leave her alone. She Her bedroom's at the end of the hall and nobody goes down there but her because she wasn't organized. But now she's a mother of two and just she's phenomenally organized. So like, people do what they want to do and when mm-hmm. they feel a need to do it. And I'll That's tell you it. something else about this. Each one of us has our own organizing style, which really does represent the uniqueness as far as where we're drawn with our knowledge, with our energy, with whatever resources we have. So when I've been dealing with subject matter experts, which by the way, every one of us is, and in areas that we may not even be honoring or valuing as expertise. I mean, someone who has taken a cross-country trip with young children and figured out how to keep them occupied and educate them, that's a level of expertise that a lot of other parents are eager to find out. And it isn't something that came from having a, a bachelor's or master's or PhD. It came from in the trenches, living the experience. So I think that that's really a great segue as far as what the organization Organizing served me. All of that experience I had, I wrote a tips booklet, 110 Ideas for Organizing Your Business Life. And as you mentioned, I sold well over 2 million copies of it online, offline, uh, in various languages and formats without spending a penny on advertising. And I have yet to find anybody whose core business mirrors what mine is. There's lots of more traditional publishers and authors. And I really embrace my uniqueness and make a point of sharing with other folks how they can keep from being lost in a sea of sameness. That's an M as in monkey in there. I can't keep you from being lost in a sea of saneness with an N like Uh Nancy. (laughs) It's uh, that's so beautiful what you uh, just said uh, man i wish i had written all those books because <laughs> i raised two performing kids at a professional at the age of 11 and man i spent a lot of time in the car entertaining <laughs> yeah so uh, that example is generic enough that uh you know it makes the point uh, a friend of mine recently in the past few years said something to me about how white vinegar is a cleaning agent. And I looked at her like she had 12 heads. And <laughs> she, and I, she and I each have a slight surplus of brain cells. So uh, uh, she said, what do you mean you don't know white vinegar is a cleaning agent? I said, well, let me share this with you. In the top thousand descriptors of my mom, you would never find good at cleaning house. So she couldn't teach me something she didn't know. And yet, that makes the point that we all know things other people don't, and that when we make an assumption of, doesn't everybody know that? The immediate answer is, nope, 
Nope. And there's reasons why tips really become valuable to people, really valuable. It's either brand new information like that white vinegar was for me, or it's a reminder of something we know, but we haven't used that information lately. Or it can be confirmation that a perceived expert just affirmed that what I know, an expert knows. <laughs> I'll puff out my chest on that one. Wow, that's, <laughs> I'm just sitting here and my mind is creative like yours. And I'm thinking, man, I could write tips book on this and this and this and this. And, this. and I'll <laughs> tell you something. I've seen a lot of folks get sidetracked because of that abundance and that you know it's it's a blessing and a curse mm -hmm. because having been um as uh, experiencing whatever level of success i have in these 30 plus years in this business a large part of that comes from focus and from strategizing so that when someone says you know i could write 30 booklets even on the same topic you know, of first starting at the most basic level, which is what I heartily encourage, because people are coming to you for the first time in your expertise. You know a lot about certain things that other people don't. So starting at the most basic level is the best gift you can give them. And it gives you as a business owner a bonus, certainly, because when you start basic, with those easily digestible bits of information, once it's been digested in a very healthy, enjoyable way, you can then go on and offer something that's a little bit more advanced in the same track. So you have your customer coming back to you. So that's building a good business foundation. And then ultimately something even more advanced but only because you've given them small pieces. You've given them the appetizer to whet their appetite for the entree. That's, oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. Wow. Every time I talk with you, I'm blown away again and again and again. And I'm thinking, I've written more than a thousand articles or on EC articles. I've written 80 books. I have over 800 videos. I can make tips booklets that would be easier to circulate in large numbers than all of, oh my gosh, instead of spending all the time in the social media time. Yeah. Oh, golly gee. Well, I am, as I said, you know, I'm somebody who, as a firstborn, I'm a natural trailblazer. If something is not there, my response to that is, oh, good. You know, and I'll see disparate entities and bring them together to make something different. My two sisters who are younger than I, uh, if something's not there, their inclination is to go, it's not supposed to be there. Me, it's like, yes, okay, how can I bring something new and different? And that's what I've made a living at for these past 30 plus years in this business. And, and that's so cool because in your world, that makes sense for you. In their world, the other thing makes sense for them. I'm not sure where I stand on that because I go both ways. I guess it depends on where I am in the moment and whatever the topic is that we're talking about. Right, exactly. Here's another thing too, that I do not speak disparagingly of books. There are lots and lots of experts who are great Sherpas, great guides on converting your content into books. I'm not one of them. My personality is let's get it done. So <laughs> tips showed up on my radar because I am about results. I am not about getting lost in the weeds with the details. So each person has their own learning style. One size does not fit all. I have things that do allow for folks to have greater success with no matter what their delivery style is. So whether it's a tips booklet, whether it's a book, whether it's an audio, whether it's a card deck, one of the big differentiators that I discovered at the end of the first year that I was in business, a prospect, a buyer, enlightened me and I changed my entire business model. I don't go anywhere near bookstores or Amazon. 
I do not sell or teach people to sell one copy at a time to one end user. Mm. At the end of that first year of business, <clears throat> this person came to me. And by the way, I happen to have been national president of the National Association of Professional Organizers at the time. Wow. I tell you that only to make the point that I had access I could have reached any of the major office supply manufacturers or any of the package, the storage companies, any of those. What I didn't have was knowledge. I came out of academia. I did not come out of corporate speak. I only had one product at the time. I did not know that the marketing departments had reasons to come up with marketing campaigns throughout the year ideally four different calendar quarters where they'd be promoting a new product, where they'd be bringing a product that they revised and improved back in. So these publications of tips in the various delivery formats could be gift with purchase. They could be, thank you for signing up for our newsletter. They could be, We've seen you come in, but you haven't bought anything yet. We'd like to offer you something that will be helpful. From that point on, I only sold in bulk or as licenses where we would rent the information in exchange for payment. Dripping a tip a week, 52 tips. A corporation could drip a tip a week on their list to stay top of mind without being totally annoying. It was educational marketing. So that's something that no matter what your product is, selling in bulk is a whole different business model than going to being a bestseller on Amazon or selling books in a bookstore. Again, I am not speaking disparagingly. I am saying it's different. It brings different results. It's a different process. You can do both. You can do either or. So any of those books that you've written, looking at it through the filter of who would be an ideal market, an audience to sell in bulk to those people instead of one at a time to one person at a time. Any products you have created or are thinking about creating what I teach any of the folks that I've, I'm privileged and honored to be able to have their attention is bulk sales, bulk sales and licensing. You can help many more people that way. You can create all kinds of opportunities much more easily than contacting those entities cold call, which I don't know about you, but that's not my idea of a good time. <laughs> Once they see and they've received something for free that you didn't send them, somebody else gave it to them free as a gift or as that year's holiday greeting instead of a printed corporate holiday card. Instead, they got something, compliments of their company. By the way, that gentleman that I spoke to, he had purchased one copy through a process that I had done the first year I was in business. By the way, I didn't have any, I didn't have two nickels to rub together when I did my booklet. Mm. So I had to become creative and it was 1991. The internet wasn't a thing yet. Reference departments in public libraries with directories that were gigantic. <laughs> and, you know, that's the process at that point. There were opportunities that presented themselves. This guy wanted to use it as that year's holiday greeting. Paulette, could we put our company name and our phone number on the cover? Sure. I had no clue. Sure. I'll make it happen. He then said, I have a big favor to ask you. I said, well, if I can, I'll be happy to. Could we, would it be okay with you if we leave your name and your contact information in these 2,500 booklets we're going to buy from you? Uh, yeah, that would be fine. <laughs> so from that moment on, and by the way, this person was not in the organizing industry. 
He was an electrical manufacturer's rep firm in San Juan, Puerto Rico. His check cleared my account beautifully. I was like, wow. <laughs> I could sit and listen to you all day. I love your energy. I love how original you are. I'm original. I think outside the box and you're like a whole different realm. So it, it's really fun to be with somebody who's so similar and yet so different. Yes. Thank you. I feel the same about you. So I think this would be a really good time to take a quick sponsor break. You got to ask questions, how to be happy, healthy, and secure. When I wrote that book some years ago, I actually sold a digital copy for $97. And now I made it available to you as the digital copy and the audio book for a very special price. And you will see the link to that in the show notes. So I want to get back to where we were. And you and I are very similar in so many ways. And the part of how we come across in the room, as you were saying so much, everybody's unique. And they have their own style and their own way of being. And we each are fit for a different kind of person in the audience. So I'm wondering when people do a tips booklet, if they have a particular audience in mind, is there a particular voice happening? Or is that something that's more widespread, like a book could reach a really big audience? A booklet is really like the quick start for a book. So you can have a book and a booklet in multiples on each. And you can have different formats. You can have the audio of the exact same content. You can create a card deck of the exact same content. You could even have a crossword puzzle. You could have lots of different delivery formats that speak to different people's learning styles and lifestyles. Somebody may be very visually oriented in their learning, and yet they're a young mom. They don't have time to sit down and read. However, they can put earbuds or a headset on and listen while they're doing something else, while they're folding the laundry, while they're out walking their child at that five o'clock in the afternoon point when they both need to get out of the house and have some shift in energy. So that's one of the things. We've been mentioning booklets. I'd like to show anyone who's watching the video part of this, some examples of booklets. These are four inches by nine inches. They fit in a number 10 envelope in North America. They are on all kinds of topics representing mm -hmm. various clients that I've had the privilege of working with. Early before COVID, I had a client who had done a lot of work with Sesame Street, and she had written a tips booklet that's a guide for guiding your child to safe TV and electronic media, 52 tips for parents. One of the things that we did to expand her product line was to create a booklet the same size that's a coloring booklet so that this is for preschool and primary age grades that are ref reflecting some of the tips that were in the booklet, but it's a coloring booklet. We did, we took a two page spread from a different children's author and made a jigsaw puzzle out of it. So there's lots and lots of ways to reach parents. Parents are some more are concerned about the electronic media than others are. So when you ask about, is it for a particular voice, a particular audience? Even a broad brushstroke of parents of children this age, particular age, is not necessarily going to be one size fits all. However, there's a large enough pool of parents who are concerned. And by the way, these are not going from my author directly to the parent. They are going via somebody else who sells stuff to parents. So Oshkosh Bagosh Clothing. Gerber Food, 
those are two quick examples of likely candidates to approach to either license this content or deliver these as downloadables or as printed copies to parents, either gift with purchase packaged in with the clothing or a coupon for purchasing more Gerber's food and the coupon to download a copy of the digital version. That's the kind of process that we teach, that we educate, that we've had the ability to sell over 2 million copies because they oh, weren't gosh. one at a time, I promise you. That's, oh, that's so powerful. I, I love everything that you just said. I have grandchildren and I wrote four parenting books. I'm pretty darn sure my kids never read my parenting books. I see them by other books because, oh, you know, you're just mom. <laughs> I like the way you raised us, mom, but that's okay. I'll buy somebody else's book. Nice. But that method, I, I would love to put that stuff in their hands. And if I give it to them, it'll get tucked away. So I have to figure out what might they buy <laughs> or they'll get copies. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's keep going on this because I have some other examples to share to give you a sense of the breadth of what kinds of content we deal with. There's a physical therapist who had been following my work for many years, mm -hmm. and he's been trained in a certain methodology for uh, dealing with joint replacement and joint health. So he did a booklet self-managed knee pain, 52 tips before considering uh, injections or surgery. So that is an example of the kind of approach he takes with the patients that he has in the, in the, um, in the physical therapy realm. And he happens to work under the umbrella of a large system of therapy, of physical therapy clinics, he went to the owner and said, imagine if the physical therapists in these locations around the country gave this away or offered it for a first visit. And in fact, what he found out was that it's a lot of general therapists or orthopedic surgeons or those practice practices that are making referrals to PTs, to physical therapists. So to find out where the origin is of the dissemination of information, and there's lots and lots of places. There's equipment people, any of the equipment that you see in a physical therapy environment, for them to purchase a very large quantity of thousands, hundreds of thousands, and even millions of copies to distribute with each of the um, each of the equipment deliveries that occur, you know, so it goes on endlessly. I have a physical therapist there that I mentioned. We've got a financial planner who talks about lifestyles beyond just the money investment. What happens when one person in a couple retires before the other? How do you not drive each other crazy and ultimately kill each other? Um, what is the dynamic going to be at the highest level of a person's being so that you contribute positive vibes to each other and that, yes, you do have enough resources of every imaginable kind, financial and more, are both people on similar spiritual levels to be able to communicate effectively and bring the best of each other out rather than going old school, blaming, guilting, doing all that stuff that gets us nowhere but separate and unhappy and all that other junk that we, you and I and our listeners are committed to as far as living a happier, stress-free life where we bring the best of ourselves, that version that is just so joyful and productive and generous rather than scarce and fearful and all those other things. 
One more, and then we'll keep going on some other stuff, I'm sure. I had a client who had been very, very high up the ranks at IBM in their sales department. And he traveled around the world training other sales teams. And in the process of that, he got sick because the stress of traveling so much and finding good healthy foods and getting good sleep and supporting his own physical being was under attack by virtue of all this travel and different time zones and not being able to get the healthiest foods and exercise and all of that and the energy on the airplanes. So in the process of finding his own health and getting back to his own health, he realized that homeopathic uh, remedies were the solution for him. And he realized that to such an extent that he decided to go become a naturopath. And the booklet is a short version of the full book that he wrote. Someone had introduced him to my work and we created this booklet, Travel Balance. 52 Tips to Stay Energized, Healthy, and Balanced While You Travel. This ended up being as useful for people who were doing leisure travel as well as professional travel. So it goes on and on and on. And you notice maybe the 52 tips as a theme that was recurring. Because 52 tips, there's a reason that that's the model. Mm. There's 52 tips 52 weeks in a year, it lends itself to learning on a gradual basis. It lends itself to staying in contact with people on a regular basis without annoying the living daylights out of them. It allows for digestion of a tip in a way that allows us to be expansive. Yes, I understand that one tip. What's next? I've incorporated that one tip. What's next? How can I grow? How can I bring this to people so that it's not a fire hose that they're drinking out of? Because less is more. Less is more. If you imagine this situation, and I'm sure that this will resonate with everyone who is hearing this interview or watching it. Imagine that you're going to a party. And the inevitable, well, what do you do? What do you do? What do you do? So let's just imagine for grins and giggles that there's a uh, very well-known local financial planner who is boasting about the fact that she's writing a book, a tome that is inclusive of every financial instrument that currently exists. Unreal, uh, unwittingly thinking that she's really bringing a fabulous gift to the world, when in fact the people around her are loath to say they barely know how to add a deposit and a withdrawal from a handwritten check register to keep track. So the next thing we see is people being as polite as possible, but you see the back of their head because they're in such overload, just the thought of all that in-depth financial information about investing and about having your money work for you and things that they just, they're intelligent in other ways, just not financially. There's time to get there though, over time, eating the elephant one bite at a time. Tips booklets. That's so brilliant. I'm just, I'm so grateful that we met because I've learned incredibly much today. And now it, um, I'm being mindful of the time and I want to bring together why you're such a perfect fit for the goal of our audience in terms of the metaphysics and the invisible forces driving our life. Would you please explain what you describe as your business superpower? I sure will. And I think that it fits perfectly. And it's reflection of what I have learned. That is awareness consciousness, mindfulness, 
Those three aspects are how I learned to expand my product line, to deliver it in different ways. Wow. I would look and I would notice things. I was in a restaurant and I saw a box in a high-end restaurant. I saw a box, a wooden box of children's books. My brain went to, I have a children's book author. If they are providing books in this restaurant for children of families who come in, I'll bet you I at least can have a conversation with them about a tips booklet and a coloring booklet. So that is an example of awareness, awareness. Huh. And the other thing too is our superpower as far as awareness and consciousness and mindfulness. We already have everything that we need. When people say to me, I'm going to research to do a booklet, I quickly and bordering on glib because I am a former East Coaster, I'll say <laughs> the only place to research is that hard drive between your ears where you've got all kinds of files filed of your own experiences, opinions, awareness. That's the only place you need to research. You've got it all already. If you don't know the mechanics, I do. And my team does. So those superpowers are right in line with everything, Allie, that you teach and that you bring in other people to share, as I'm so happy to be able to do today. Awareness, consciousness, mindfulness. Increasing that all. First to be aware of it, and then expanding it. I'm so grateful for all that you shared with us today. And um, you you shared so much, whoa, I got to write this down stuff. Is there a message that maybe you haven't had a chance to deliver yet that you'd like to leave with everyone? Well, if there were surprises that I find with subject matter experts, I have a hunch our audience falls under this category. There's a concern that tips are too little information rather than the ideal start. There's an initial fear of going a non-traditional path like bulk sales and licensing. There's a willingness that is necessary of subject matters to integrate the metaphysical because they wouldn't be part of your audience if that wasn't part of them. So bring that aspect to wherever you are distributing, wherever you are approaching. You'll find an audience there. A resistance to the selling process. I don't talk in terms of selling very often. I talk about visiting, sharing your enthusiasm, and seeing how you can help. Doesn't sound like sales to me. Does it sound like sales to you? Go wow. visit with people you already know. Get your enthusiasm all over them. I don't think that's going to be difficult for you if you're really stoked about what you're doing, and then see how you can help them. And keep in mind, they know people you don't know. Once you forget that the goal is to reach and help more people is when there's a problem. Keep that goal in mind. You are attempting and succeeding in reaching more people and helping them. That's the bottom line. I'm, thank you. I totally agree. I did a talk uh, some weeks ago sharing that the wealthiest people on the planet, they're not people to be angry at. They're the people who have given the most service to all of us. I know that you had a gift to share with everybody. I do. And that gift, I have given you the link for that. And I suspect you're going to want to put that into the show notes also. Mm -hmm. It is an example of many different ways and directions that you can distribute your content. Now, I love working with folks, and I even hesitate saying the word work, because we play in the sandbox. We play in the sandbox, and we do not only single author booklets, we also do collaborative booklets, where groups of 14 people each contribute their knowledge and I give back a whole lot. 
not only in what to do with it, but my company handles all the production for you. So we teach you a lot that can be utilized in whatever else you're doing with your, your business and your knowledge. Thank you. I, I just love spending time with you. So what is the best way for people to reach you? The website is tipsproducts.com. Don't lose your S along the way. Tipsproducts.com. You will find on there my contact information as far as phone and email. I am based in mostly sunny San Diego. I know that I mentioned, made reference to being a former East Coaster. So if you are on the East Coast, keep in mind we have three hour time difference. You can email me 24 seven. You'll likely get a response during business hours during the weekdays. That's perfect. And of course, all these links will be in the show notes. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for delivering such, in, in my opinion, critical information, because unless information is consumed, it doesn't serve anybody. That's right. And this way people can take it in at their own leisure and when it's right for them. Exactly. So- Allie, thank you so much again. Thank you. And I want to remind everybody to look in the show notes for the link. Grab your copy of Seven Critical Keys for Successful Relationships. Get your You Gotta Ask Questions special offer and join our Facebook group because special offers and events get announced in there. And it's a great place to ask questions. Also, the link for our show site so you can watch the video or listen to the audio and find every episode that we've done. And remember, remember to enjoy, that's I-N, capital J-O-Y, every moment, because everything you experience in life, none of it happens outside of your body, and it all happens within, and I'll see you next time. You've been listening to a talk on the wilder side. Thanks for tuning in to Let's Get Metaphysical. Be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss a single episode. And while you're at it, please leave a rating and review and be sure to share it with your friends. Tune in every Monday for more exciting insights and wisdom on life beyond your five senses. Until next time, take a small step in a new direction. Start now.